Okay, so what we're going to look at in this PowerPoint is are the different types of radiation and properties. Okay, so again, if you can download the PowerPoint and play yourself with the simulator, it's better. But if not, then I'll show you here in the video. Now, here we've got an emitter of radiation, a source. So I can switch between alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. You see, the beta particles are smaller, and then gamma because it's a wave of electromagnetic radiation. This is our Geiger Muller tube, which is going to detect radiation that's arriving. If I switch on the, de the, de the counter here, here down at zero will be when there's no uh, radiation being received by the Geiger Muller tube. But here it's at the maximum. So first thing we'll explore is, is alpha particles and, and how putting different objects here in between the source and the detector is going to affect the count uh, that is being detected by the Geiger Muller tube. Now, this must be happening in a, in a vacuum because alpha particles uh, get absorbed by just a couple of centimeters of air. So we must be setting this up inside a vacuum so there's no air particles. Otherwise, after just a few centimeters here, the alpha particles would be completely absorbed by the air. So alpha would only penetrate a few centimeters of air. In fact, if I put my hand here, my hand makes count rate drop to pretty much zero because all these alpha particles will be uh, absorbed by even the, not the skin of my hand, but the dead skin cells that form the upper surface of my hand. So being exposed to an alpha emitter, if it's outside your body, it's not that much of a problem because most of the alpha particles will be absorbed by the dead skin cells lining the surface of your uh, your skin won't penetrate to any inner tissues where it could do damage. What you will have to worry about is getting any particles of this source, this emitter, inside your body. Because if you swallow, breathe in an alpha emitter, it will be giving out alpha particles inside your body, and that those particles will reach living tissues and cause damage. So my hand stops. Uh, alpha particles, a sheet of paper stops alpha particles. So of course aluminium foil, lead, thick lead, all of this is going to stop alpha particles. So alpha particles are stopped for, by a piece of paper or just a few centimeters of air. We go up to beta particles now. These particles are smaller, faster moving. So if I put my hand there, some of these beta particles will actually pass through my hand and get picked up by the detector. So beta particles have greater penetrating power. Having a beta, a source of beta particles outside my body is a bit more concerning because it will penetrate my skin and reach inner tissues. But for medical reasons, we quite often put a beta emitter inside our bodies because it's it, most of the beta radiation that's being given out will leave the body. So it won't ionize, it won't damage vital tissues. So having a beta source inside your body is not that much of a worry. Having a beta source outside your body, I'd be a bit more concerned. A piece of paper won't stop beta radiation, but aluminium foil will, and thin lead and thick lead, definitely. Uh, aluminium is, less dense, a lot less dense than lead. Lead is a very dense metal. So lead and aluminium foil will absorb beta, but not paper nor my skin. Go to gamma. Let's pop my hand in front. Gamma will pass straight through my hand. In fact, most of the gamma radiation will just pass straight through and come out the other side. So it's not great cause for concern having a gamma emitter outside your body or inside your body. Okay, paper, pass straight through paper, 
and we'll pass straight through our minion foil. Thin lead, it will penetrate, but there's a reduction in the amount of gamma radiation coming through, penetrating. And thick lead, we will need thick lead to stop gamma radiation. So when we talk about penetrating power, how, how much radiation can penetrate, alpha, it's just a few centimeters of air or a piece of paper. Beta mm, will penetrate air, skin, paper. Mm, aluminium foil will be needed. Uh, it will penetrate aluminium foil, but a few centimeters of aluminium will stop beta. And you need thick lead to stop gamma or even meters of concrete. But we'll make a summary of all of this in a moment. Now, for this, I'm my most sincere apologies, but I'm going to switch on my webcam one sec so that you can see. Okay, my webcam is there. Let's jump back to the PowerPoint. Now, I want you to see the webcam because I'm going to remind you of the uh, Fleming's left hand. Oh, this is my left hand. Okay, it's looking from that direction at me. So my thumb is the direction that of, of a force or thrust. First finger, the magnetic field, and my center finger is current. Now, alpha particles passing through a magnetic field, the alpha particles have a positive charge. So if the alpha particle, I have it here going from the middle of the page towards the right, the current represented by that movement of charge is going in that same direction to the right. The magnetic field in my diagram that I'm looking at is going from north to south. So my first finger here is pointing up that way. Current's going that way. And the alpha particle here is when it passes through the magnetic field, a force is exerted on that charge. So it's deflected upwards. Okay. Now, alpha particle has a charge of plus two. So the force is twice the force that a beta particle will, will feel as it passes through the magnetic field, but the alpha particle is thousands of times more massive. It's thousands of times more mass, about 8,000 times more mass. So the actual effect of that force pushing the alpha particle upwards is fairly small, okay? Alpha particles are deflected slightly by the magnetic field. Beta particle, what direction is it going to get reflected? Opposite direction because it has negative charge. So if the beta particle is traveling from left to right across my screen, as in the diagram, the current will be traveling the opposite direction from right to left across my screen. The north arrow, north to the south of the magnetic field is still going the same direction. So the force that's exerted on this beta particle will be downwards, which is why I can see my beta particle there bending down. And it is very strongly deflected by the magnetic field because it might only have half the charge that the alpha particle has got. It might only feel half of the force, but the mass is a lot smaller. So the acceleration is much, much, much bigger. So beta particles are strongly deflected by a magnetic field. And gamma particles, because they have no charge whatsoever, so my left hand rule, I've got field, I've got current, but I haven't got current because there's no charge moving. So the third doesn't happen. So gamma ray photons or gamma ray electromagnetic radiation carries straight on. It's not deflected by the magnetic field, which tells us that there's no charge there. Now, let's put all this together. I would recommend writing a table like this up in your books. So an alpha particle is two neutrons and two protons, which is the same as the nucleus for a helium atom. 
you added two electrons, you would then have a helium, uh, helium atom. Electric charge is plus two, because it's two protons. Relative atomic mass is four, because it's four nucleons here. Penetrating power, it will penetrate only a few centimeters of air and won't penetrate a piece of paper. Ionizing is very strongly ionizing because it's very massive, it has lots of mass. So it's like throwing a big bowling ball down the bowling alley. When it hits the pins, it knocks the pins here, there and everywhere. So very strongly ionizing. It knocks lots of electrons off other atoms when it strikes. And the effect of a magnetic field is it's weakly deflective. Twice the charge, twice the force, but very big particle. So that force doesn't have a very big acceleration. Then we'll add to a table for beta particles. Beta particle is a high energy electron or fast moving electron. Charge is minus one, charge on electron. The relative atomic mass is, it's like one two thousandth or one divided by 1860 to be more precise uh, so it's two thousandth of the, the mass of a proton or a neutron which is why the magnetic field has a lot more effect because the mass is a lot less it will only be stopped by a few millimeters of aluminium it will penetrate paper and air it will penetrate a few meters of air very it's weakly ionizing so if you imagine a bowling ball going down the bowling alley and uh, knocking the pins everywhere, well this will be like doing the same thing but with a marble. You throw the marble down the bowling alley, you might be lucky to knock, off, to knock one of the pins over. So it doesn't knock a lot of electrons off of the atoms, but it is strongly affected by a magnetic field because despite having half the charge of the alpha particle, it has a fraction, a tiny fraction of the mass. And finally, gamma radiation is electromagnetic radiation, uh, high energy, so very high frequency, very short wavelength, there's no electric charge, there's no mass, hence it has a very high penetrating power. You need centimeters of lead or meters of concrete to stop gamma radiation. It's very weakly ionizing because it doesn't interact very much with atoms, so it doesn't knock a lot of electrons off of the atoms. And it is not deflected by a magnetic field or electric field because it doesn't have charge. So pop that into your notes. I'm going to quickly just flip and change window to, uh, to what the quiz should look like. So here, if you complete the quiz, Okay, match the description and type of radiation. You've got check boxes. So pick, 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 pick. Uh, you might not have to pick all the options. Yeah, as long as you just pick one. Match the radiation to its atomic mass. So each row you have to pop me an answer in. What kind of things different radiations will penetrate? Here you can answer multiple questions, multiple ones, for example, one centimeter of air, just one centimeter of air, alpha, beta, and gamma will penetrate one centimeter. Two centimeters, alpha won't penetrate and so on. And pop that form into me so that I can check to make sure that everybody's understanding. Okay. Hope you enjoyed it.